But we go to Ohio, and I told you. Now, during sports season, and it's still running as far as I know, there are a series of commercials, but the most prominently run one from this uh, corporate chicken wing outfit called BW3 concerns a, uh, a bunch of people in BW3 who want to keep on uh, uh, getting sozzled on, on cheap draft beer. It ain't that cheap at BW3. And eating uh, what are you know really quite good wings when, once you get around the whole hormones and steroids. You just got to do some, you know, push it to the back of your mind, disbelief sort of thing. But, but they're good once you've done that. I love me some wings. I'm wing, I am wing advertising susceptible. Okay? I'm powerless over wings. So um, there's this one commercial, though, where the, uh, and one, you know, one, one patron of the BW3 says, I sure wish this game would go into overtime. And the bartender, of course, overhears it and reaches beside the tap and pushes a little button. This panel folds out, and he punches the red button. And the red button lights up a light some da- somewhere down in the bowels of some stadium, at which point uh, a sort of CIA-looking guy in coveralls who's masquerading as a janitor goes into a secret control room, and there's a guy streaking down uh, downfield uh, with carrying the ball, and all of a sudden the guy in the coverall starts punching buttons, and sprinklers stop start popping up uh, just as a, a tackler is about to take the guy down. Now, don't turn tune away because I'm talking about sports, because I'm not talking about sports. So one by one, the sprinkler heads pop up and take down these defenders, who, if that really was happening to them, would have shattered ankles and compound fractures and probably never walk right again. But, uh, dang, it's funny, because see, that feller's going to run into the end zone, and they're going to keep, uh, keep on uh, sitting there getting sozzled on draft beer and eating them chicken wings, see? Right? So then the guy runs into the end zone, and whoo, you know, and, 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 and the last thing you hear is the announcer saying, looks like this game is going to overtime. Now, why in God's name, why in God's name would I go there? Because there's nothing much more, there's nothing more oppressive, really, when you get right down to it, than getting blown away. What do I mean? Well, like I said, we go to Ohio for this one. You know there's a fad going on, and it's, of course, a fully funded corporate fad from the uh, uh, promulgated by the sick, psychotic, weird-ass freaks over at the National Republican Rifle Association. About wanting to, bra- want- wanting to allow God-fearing, America-loving, patriotic gun owners to take their firearms into the bar. Really? That's, that's the next battleground. I want to be able to go out with, or take my gun with me and get all liquored up. Yeah, uh, at the urging of the, uh, the sick gun lobby, there are state legislatures all over the country that ha- have or will uh, craft legislation that allows the carrying of firearms into, and I quote, parks, schools, government buildings, university campuses, churches, and daycare centers. No, really, daycare centers. You know, it was so sweet. He was just born, and 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 his daddy put a little twenty-two rifle, a little, little fort. That now, and, and it was one of them over unders. It was a twenty-two rifle on the top, and a four ten shotgun on the bottom. You know, because a small guy and a little feller can handle that. Put it right next to him in the crib, and 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 said the pledge of allegiance to him, and played him some Lee Greenwood. Daycare centers. Ohio is not to be trifled with. Ohio will not be outdone. Nope. So, among other things, uh, the Ohio legislature uh, has taken under consideration a law that would allow... (coughs) that would allow God-fearing, upstanding, patriotic, gun-toting Ohioans 
to bring their God-fearing, upstanding, patriotic, oh-hiring, shooting arm with them when they go to a bar or a resto rant. Or, <laughs> and it's all going to become clear suddenly, or an open-air arena like a sports stadium. I repeat, or an open-air arena like a sports stadium. You know, like the big horseshoe in Columbus, where they just love the people from the University of Michigan. Or maybe, or maybe uh, the stadium there by Lake Erie, where the Cleveland Browns plays them some football. Now it becomes clear, doesn't it? We're a group of marketing geniuses who did not understand the meaning of the extra point, the point after touchdown, handed us a BW3 commercial that featured uh, an insidious uh, agent in the bowels of the stadium making sprinkler heads pop up to knock off the tackler so that the, 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 the ball carrier could get through to the end zone. We now have, in reality, no kidding, I wouldn't pull your leg about this, the idea being put forward in the state of Ohio that everybody coming to a Cleveland Browns game against the hated Stellars can bring a shooting arm. I can just think of 600,000 different ways that this ain't going to be a good idea. Really? Roethlisberger drops back. He evades one tackler, two tacklers. He looks downfield. He finds Heinz Ward streaking along the sideline. Heinz Ward catches the ball. He's at the 40, the 35, the 30. Bang! Heinz Ward is dead! Come on. What are the statistical possibilities out of, say, 60,000 people? in a sports arena, that one of them, you know, I had the under, and if he'd have got away there, I'd have lost. 2011. Maybe we just need to change the name of this program to 2011 with Bob Kincaid, because I'm not at, I'm not at all comfortable with what, what 2011 is. I mean, my God. Football players wear some pretty profound body armor at this point in time. I mean, one of the brands is Under Armour. Does it have to be Kevlar now to play in the state of Ohio? 60,000 people. How many people? Wait, 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 wait. Screw 60,000 people. How many people fit in the big horseshoe in Columbus when Michigan comes calling? That's like 100,000 people, isn't it? And not one of those those drunken sods. I mean, come on, it's a college football game, okay? I attend college football games from, or have in the uh, dim and distant misty past. And I can tell you there's a lot of beer consumed. i got to tell you, I read this story and I was shocked. And I'm pretty well past shock. Even Alabama hasn't come up with this. No, even Alabama knows better. You would not... They poison trees in Alabama over football games. And you're going to turn those loonies loose with firearms at Bryant-Denny or Jordan-Hare or Legion Field? Oh, hell no! So let's review. I think this is another case of the oppression fantasies of the right wing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I don't know about you, but if I live somewhere that it's okay to strap on old Betsy and go get good and liquored up, or even have a salad... I ain't going. And you know what? I'm not going to take my family with me to a football game 
where it's possible that some crazy bastard with a, uh, with, a with a firearm in his pants and three and a half gallons of uh, of, of Bud Light is suddenly going to get concerned about the fact that he's got Ohio State and three and a half and shoot the place kicker. In otherwise, in other words, what we're talking about here is the marginalization and, in fact, the ghettoization of normal people. Because you and me, we don't want to be anywhere that those, those lead-laden freaks might be. And so we stay home. All the normal people stay home while all the weird gun people go to the restaurants, and we just hope that one of these days they'll just get it over with and take care of matters and shoot it out and hell with it. No, we don't hope that. We hope that we actually live in a society that someday will come to its freaking senses. Yeah, we hope that. We hope that in one hand and we in the other one, and we know pretty damned well which one's going to fill up first. <laughs> 